Gattini even before I have the opportunity to play as Gattini. So I think uh, the opportunity to actually actually play as herself, I think it's such a privilege and I think I'm so lucky and so grateful to be able to have that opportunity. Um, I'm a big fan of Kartini because she's basically inspires me in so many ways. I read her writings and I think she's a very progressive and she's basically a genius uh, and at a very young age and at, and she lives at the time when where we don't have any much we don't have any access to information and everything and she's already um, she's already very progressive. She's really thinking out of the box for so many people, not just only for her. I did a lot of research and um, and it has to be multiple ways because it doesn't uh, it not just uh, book research but also physical and visiting to different location research. Um, we, I did went to the place where she lived in Rambam, the place where she lived after she got married, because the place where she lived when she's still a girl, she didn't get married, is already totally renovated by the current mayor. Um, and in Rambam, the, the house of her husband, it's still very original like it was when 200 years back, because the Bupati actually donated the whole house for the government to be a museum. So we can still see how she really lived. You can see her bathroom, what kind of shower, what kind of sink that she used. She used the ones that is being sent from the Netherlands. And she, I can saw her bed where she gave birth and she, where she actually blew her last breath. And uh, I can see the her, her room and it's next next side by side to her son's room and her husband's room. So it's like I learned a little, a little bit of Japanese and at least how to speak Indonesian with a Japanese accent and also a little bit of uh, Netherlands and uh, Dutch language and she does a lot of conversing with the Dutch people, different people and she's very articulative in, even in Dutch. So I think that's what brought her way of thinking is actually going global because she managed to articulate her thoughts in foreign language, therefore her thoughts is not only consumed by the local the local people of Indonesian or Japanese people, but because she because she can communicate internationally, therefore her thoughts are record uh, are recognized internationally also. Uh, as an actor, you have the task of making a lot of bridge from you, your character, yourself, into the character you're playing. And in this case, it's Gartini. So I was really looking a lot of bridge. I was making a lot of bridge, looking for similarities between me, myself, into that character. Um, and to my own surprise, I, by studying and studying more about her character, about her, the history of her life and everything, I see more and more similarities. Uh, but one that is very significant is actually we have the same dream. Uh, Diane have the same dream with Gartini, which is we really wanted to get educated abroad, and that actually never happened. Well, in her case, I didn't. So when I was doing a lot of emotion dwelling for her character, I basically use I can use a lot of my own bank of emotion thinking about the, that same dream because this whole journey in this film is basically how to how we were going to really root for Kartini to actually reach her, her dream which is get educated abroad. She won that scholarship and yet at the end of the day she couldn't take that. Well there's a lot of favorite scenes but one of my favorite is the one that lets me to communicate very intensely with the two girls that play Scartini and Rukmini, which being played by Acha Sepriyasa and uh, Ayusita. I think those two actors are really fun girls to be with, and we are friends in even off screen, and so many levels I can really relate to them. It's like really having a sister with them. So that part of the shooting really didn't feel like work at all because it was basically we're mainly having fun, and we're having fun and conversing in Japanese. <laughs> Before I, 
begin, uh, I was a little bit worried of realizing how much a burden this is for me, how much, how big of a responsibility for me to actually play Katini and have to do well. Uh, but through mm, through the days when I started to begin my research and started to actually doing the task instead of worrying it, I worried less and less because I wasn't concentrating on the you know all the fears and all the burden and everything because I know that's actually counterproductive and I won't be able to um, you know accomplish a lot of stuff if I'm spending too much energy in worrying I would not be productive at all although playing Katini has a lot of stages in working you know like in, in research there's a lot of things to research you need to read so many books so many books that she wrote and so many books that she reads so I can actually basically download her way of thinking and like grasp and fully understand how she thinks at that time. And then I can I have to learn how to how to move in Japanese clothing, which is totally different than nowadays clothing. So I used to like walk around and do my activities here in Jakarta in wearing kain because the physiology it, it changes your physiology. It changes the way you walk and the way you behave, the way you interact with your surroundings when you're in that kind of confining clothes. And that is also another another uh, method of me getting into that character. And then at last, I also, you know, the, the Japanese and the, the, the Dutch language I also learn. But there's so many things to do for being able to play into this role well. And yet I do it one by one, step by step. And at the end of the day, I'm just glad that I managed to do everything very easily. One of my bucket lists after Kartini was playing in a comedy, which is I already did. Actually, my other bucket list is actually play as a, uh, an action film. And actually, I did that this year. Mm -hmm. Right after Kartini, I got the opportunity to play as a supporting, actor, uh, supporting actress in this action film, which is The Night Comes For Us. And it's going to be out uh, next year. I only have a small role here, but this is quite a break for me because I have always been associated with you know drama genre, and I know I really want to broaden my spectrum as an actor to be able to be considered seriously also in a different genre. No, actually no. I mean, I'm quite um, I'm quite welcome with any you know offers and everything, but you, there's. There is so many you can do in one time, you know, in a year. I don't think you can do more than four films or something. I mean, because, uh, you know, films that are well made usually took a lot of time to prepare and a lot of time to shoot because it should be something serious. It should be, you should really do it wholeheartedly. I mean, I think all part of the crew should do that. And um, I think. With that kind of production, I think you can only do that a year, maybe at maximum, I don't know, three. I think three is also already a lot, maybe two. Okay, last year I did Ada Perengan Cinta and Kartini. And this year I did The Night Comes For Us. And I think that's all. So I think um, it's not about keeping it exclusive or not, but I also think that in order to evolve into a good actor, you also need to have a rich a bank of emotion taken from your own personal experience in your real life and I think that's how work-life balance comes into very important stuff being an actor I like to keep things balanced between my leisure time my free time me being in my actual life being present in my real life and being present in front of the camera I think that should be balanced because if I'm not taking any break having a real life I don't think I would be able to have what it takes to present as an actor also in front of them. Well being being to be able to make movies, I think it's such a prestigious job because you you have a job, you have a you have a job, but basically your job requires so much creativity and so much flexibility. Uh, and you're basically telling stories to the world. I think, I think that's just great. I mean, like not everybody could have a job to doing something that they like, and and this is telling stories to the world, making p 
people that watch the films feel connected to other films. I think um, basically humans write stories or tell stories or even make movies in, in the more modern world basically to connect to other humans and to, to actually make the viewers remember how human they are. Oh, my top favorite film would be Dead Poet Society, uh, Running with Scissors, um, Wes Anderson films. I love Michelle Gondry. I love Science of Sleep. I love Dancing in the Dark by B uh, Bjork. And, uh, I love, I love, I love how people really take a different angle and tell stories. Well, I'm uh, inspired with a lot of actors. I'm inspired by Natalie Portman. Uh, I also look up to uh, Meryl Streep mm, and a lot of uh, works from Johnny Depp. And but you know, I'm just a fan. I mean, I'm not necessarily being a fan of them makes my acting better or not. Or I'm, I just watch a lot of movies to reach in my references. Oh, watch a lot of films, mm -hmm. even Indonesian films, even if they're not good, even if it's not your personal preferences, watch them anyway, because I think you can only say you're a filmmaker uh, if you like watching movies. Don't even dare try to say that you're a <laughs> filmmaker or an actor or something if you basically have no reference in, in how other people are doing. Hi, I'm Dian Sastra and don't forget to subscribe to Indonesia Tattoo channel.